Have you come to terms with the fact that you need to get some support to hire a virtual assistant, but you have no idea what tasks you would give to a virtual assistant? Well, you're in the right place because Today, we're going to look at 11 ideal tasks to give to a virtual assistant. And if you're new around here, my name is Jen Lehner. I have helped hundreds of solopreneurs, coaches, course creators, authors, and subject matter experts scale their businesses by outsourcing the smart way. So let's dig into these 11 ideal tasks. First on the list, social media. Aren't you so ready to let go of the posting on social media and just the constant hamster wheel that is involved with that? Well, let me show you the tools that we use and how we take care of that in my own business. So what you're looking at here is our Trello board. We love Trello, but you honestly don't need anything. Like, I mean, you don't have to use Trello. You could use Asana. You could use a Google Doc, a really any kind of software that allows you to collaborate. And what I want you to look here is at this column where it says content processing. And you'll notice that each card has a date. There's July 28th, July 27th. And each of these cards has the information of what this post is going to be and where it goes. Okay. So we've got a list that this is the content that's going to go out. And then these are the graphics that we need. These are all the places where it needs to get published and any copy that needs to go with it, like my thoughts uh, about it or any links that need to go with it are going to be listed here as well. So like right here where it says description, this is all the copy that's going to go with this social media post. The point is, we know every day of the week what we're going to post on social media in advance. Then what we can do, you have a couple of options. You can use a tool like Recur Post. Um, this is a, a content scheduler that will post your content on all the channels where you want your content to appear. So over here on the left, you could see everywhere that we've got listed. We've got Google My Business, LinkedIn Company Page, LinkedIn Profile, Twitter, all the places, okay? And so what we can do is um, my team goes in and they just schedule all the content here in advance and it automatically gets published on that date. So they set it and forget it. And of course, the other thing that is so great is you, you don't need anything fancy like that because on all social media these days, you can just schedule it from right there inside the platform. So if you go to Creator Studio in Facebook, you can schedule your Instagram and your Facebook posts in advance natively right here um, in, in this amazing dashboard. So I'm gonna click Create Post. And of course, I'm not really going to be doing this. My VA is going to be doing this. We just write let's do test, add a photo or a video or whatever you want. And right here where it says publish, we're going to schedule the post. And you just pick your time and date. So that's just a brief overview of how you your VAs can handle all your social media for you. What about inbox management? Yes, managing your emails so that when you wake up in the morning, you only have the, what you need to see sitting in that inbox for you. So maybe you only have two emails versus the 500 that are sitting there. And I know what you're thinking because it makes you feel a little vulnerable to have a VA in your inbox. And maybe you sort of think like, what if they delete something I really need? Yada, yada, yada. I know exactly what you're thinking because actually this is the last thing that I gave to my VA. I wish it would have been the first thing. Let me give you a glimpse of how we do this in my business. All right. This is a glimpse into our, or yeah, my business email account. And you're probably thinking, Jen, my Gmail does not look like that. Like it doesn't have these cool sections. I've got a video that will show you how to do that. I'll link to it down below, but this is the main thing that I want to show you. So when my VA comes in here, so for example, LinkedIn marketing. So there's this email about LinkedIn marketing. So she knows that that is probably something we're not going to save. It's not something I necessarily need to see. She might read it if she thinks there's something valuable for our business, but she'll probably just delete that or archive it. But let's suppose it's something that she 
thinks I really need to see that's come into my inbox. So um, we're going to pretend this email from Tamsin is something that I need to see. She's going to put a star on that. And if you look over here in the right hand quadrant, you could see all the emails that are starred that I need to pay attention to. Then if I get to the inbox first and I see something and I'm thinking, oh, this is something that my VA needs to take care of. I'll click on that star over here on the left and I'm going to click it again until I see the icon. You see how the icons are changing? So I'm looking for the little red arrow thingy right there. And what happens is if you look over here to the right under delegate, it's going to take a minute. Let me refresh it. And if you look here under delegated, you can see that's it's moved over here to the section on the right. So now Nika knows when she comes in, oh, this is something I need to take care of. And then there's certain blogs and newsletters that I subscribe to that Nika knows that I like to read. So uh, if you look over here in the to read section, you can see Zapier. I love their blog. And so she knows that I want to read that later. The Daily Stoic. Um, there's a few others. But anyway, the way that she gets it into that box is she comes over here. She clicks the star and she clicks it again and clicks it again and then you'll see there's a blue eye and that moves it over to this section okay and so the next um, icon on here is question mark and what that means is you know how when you reach out to someone and the ball is in their court and then you sort of forget about it well what this does is it allows you to follow up with that person. So as you can see, I clicked on the purple check mark there on the left. It came over here in the right uh, under a waiting reply. So I know that I need to check on this, you know, whenever. This is about as full as my inbox ever is because right now it's late in the day. When I wake up tomorrow morning and I come in and check in into my email, I might have four emails over here in the star folder and everything over here in the main section will have been deleted or archived. If you have a Facebook group, that is the third ideal task that you should hand over to a VA. 90% of the things that you do in a Facebook group are tasks that you can hand it to a VA and they're very process driven. They're things that can be repeated, weekly tasks, monthly tasks, annual tasks. For example, every month at the beginning of the month, my VAs find out through the analytics that Facebook groups give you, they just put it on a platter for you and show you your top 20 most engaged, I think it's 20 or 10 most engaged Facebook group members. Well, that's something that your VA can do. They could take a screenshot of that, post it in your Facebook group, tag each of those members. And it goes such a long way in making people feel great. And your VA can do this as your brand avatar. So when they post, it's posting as your company avatar. Our members love this. It's such a meaningful thing to do and, and yet so easy. And you don't have time for it, right? Like these are the little things that you probably don't have time for, but if it's set up as a system, as a process, it's done every month, then your VA is just checking those boxes. And 90% of the things that you're posting in there, questions that need to be answered, those can be done by your VAs. And the beauty in that is that your VA all along the way is really getting to know your community. So they're able to serve them better. 360 degrees graphics. You don't need a really top-notch graphic designer in your business. These days, especially if you've spent any time in Canva.com, you know this. If you've never been to Canva.com, run, don't walk. It's an amazing, amazing tool that allows us to create very professional-looking graphics. And the reason is because the templates in Canva were created by some of the best graphic designers out there. So we simply have to change the colors, fill in the words that we want, and we look like we did hire, you know, top-notch graphic designers. So your VA can absolutely do that for almost all of the graphics that you need in your business. Also, there are wonderful services you can subscribe to. We love Template Tribe because every single month, the owner of that business 
creates these fantastic templates for everything, for PDFs, freebies and workbooks and um, Zoom backgrounds and just anything that you could possibly need. We absolutely love it. And I'll put a link to that down below in the resources from social media to landing pages to all your funnels and so forth. Speaking of landing pages and funnels, that brings us to our next perfect ideal task to give to your VA. And that is landing pages and opt-in boxes and all the pieces of the funnel, sales pages, um, because all these, whether you use Squarespace or Kajabi or lead pages, whatever it is you use, they've got templates. The templates look great. Your VA can use the templates. And as far as the, the process for doing that, you know, you can set it up one time and your VA can replicate that over and over again. Newsletters. Are you sending out a weekly newsletter to your audience? And if not, why not? Uh, probably because you don't have time to think of what to say every week. You're so busy with everything else. Like who's got time for that? And the beauty of doing a compilation sort of a roundup type of newsletter is that it can be turned into a system and templated. So let me explain. Uh, have you ever seen Tim Ferriss's five bullet Friday email? Perfect example of kind of a roundup email. It's short and sweet. And he just links to five things that he's, you know, something he might be reading, a funny joke he heard, uh, a great movie that he just watched, a delicious wine that he just tasted, a, a quote that he heard, an exercise that he did, just something, but there's five of them. And it comes out every single Friday like clockwork. And it's great. We do something similar in my business. It's not as brief, but we do a compilation, a roundup email of social media news, things people have posted in our group, announcements, great deals that we found. We send one out on Monday to one group and we send one out on Friday to another group. This is 100% done by my team. And they're just rounding up content. They're putting in the applicable links for that content, all the graphics, all the things we need. And that's consistent content that's going out twice a week that I don't really have other than I do give it a once over before it goes out, but they take care of that. I do not spend any time on that, but it's high value and my audience loves it. Podcast production and promotion. Everything from the show notes at the end to the timestamps to the transcripts that I already say transcripts to the promotional images and the little audiograms that need to be created. Every bit of that process can be done to your VA. So by your VA, so that you really are just stepping into your office, getting in front of that microphone and pressing record. That is all I do for my podcast is I literally just hit record and everything else happens by my team. Editing, my VAs are perfectly capable of editing my podcast episode, but we do outsource that to an agency that just does podcast editing. Video editing, basic video editing can be done by your virtual assistant. So uh, whether that's just adding an intro and an outro to your Zoom meetings that after the fact or any kind of video that you produce can be edited by your virtual assistant. And they, they have tools now that are just so easy to use. You know, uh, the, the pros use things like Final Cut Pro, right? But we don't need anything that sophisticated. Something like a Camtasia or a ScreenFlow works great. It's super simple. And your VA can absolutely do basic video editing. And as they get more experienced, they can start to do fancier stuff. Zoom replays. So that sort of ties in with videos, but it's a little more specific. If you're a coach or anyone who does regular Zoom calls for your community or your members, you know that there's so much work to do after you end that meeting because the video has to get processed. The transcripts have to get created. Uh, if you're like us, you'll put timestamps into the highlights and uh, put that in the show notes so people can easily access the information that they need. Then it needs to be sent out. The replay needs to be sent out to the relevant people who may or may not have been tagged in your email marketing system. So um, all of that, all of that Zoom stuff, that goes to your VA. Task number 10, new client onboarding. So there's a starting point for every new client, every new student, every new customer. There is some sort of process that is in your business already. And every bit of that can be handed over to your virtual assistant. So let's suppose you get a new client. The very first thing they need to do is fill out a questionnaire. 
that needs to be sent to them. An invoice needs to be sent. A receipt needs to be sent. A welcome email needs to be sent. Um, maybe you have a welcome video that you're going to send. Maybe they need to get access to a particular program, product, platform, um, uh, Google Drive folder, all those things, all those parts and pieces, you got it, you're a VA. Affiliate campaigns. So affiliate campaigns are, you've taken a course, for example, and you love the course and the course creator says, hey, you know what, if you tell other people about this program, then I am going to give you, you know, 40% of any referrals that you send my way. Or maybe you use a product like ConvertKit or Kajabi or ClickFunnels or something like that. And they tell you, hey, you know, we're going to do this promotion. And if you get the word out, you're going to get X percentage uh, of every person that you send our way. Well, if you're already using these products and you already love these things, then why not, you know, share the word and uh, spread the word and then also get that nice commission. The problem is they send you these wonderful packages, right? Have you seen them? They've got graphics, they've got swipe copy. They really have everything you need, but it still takes time because you have to make those emails your own. You have to make sure that the graphics are, are what you want to use. You have to put it in your content calendar and think, okay, where does this fit? what day am I going to send what emails on? And, um, and you really do have to plan for it, but it's, it's really something that can be completely handed over to your virtual assistant and you have no, your hand is not in it at all. And really the only thing that you have to do is sit back and watch your PayPal balance increase. And lastly, what I want to say, and maybe you've picked up on this based on all the tasks that I've given you, there's really nothing that you can't outsource to a VA except the stuff that only you can do, right? So your VA cannot get on and do your webinar. Your VA cannot write your book. Your VA cannot do your podcast. Although I will say that my VA stepped in for me uh, on my podcast yesterday because I missed a plane and I had to sleep on the floor in the Atlanta airport. And that's a, another story. But for the most part, your VA can't do that stuff, but that's the stuff that you do. That's the stuff that is revenue producing. All the rest of it goes to your virtual assistant. So thanks for watching today on the best tasks to outsource to your virtual assistant. If you like today's video, make sure to like and subscribe because there's a lot more where this came from. And don't forget to hit the little bell so you never miss a future episode. See you next time.